What is up everybody and welcome to what is probably going to be the longest video I've ever recorded on this channel. Uh, we're gonna find out because today it is time to talk about the entirety of my Balasong collection. So we're gonna go through every single Balasong I have. I have uh, water on standby ready for me when I definitely need water during this. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I will be going through Every ballast song in my collection, starting with uh, these ancillary cases, which have some really interesting stuff in them, and then we'll dig into the main case, um, which has some of like the best ballast songs in a little bit. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump right into it because I'm gonna try to make this as fast as I can, but as I said, this is probably gonna be the longest video I've ever made. Okay, so to begin, let's start somewhere simple. Let's start with um, this case right here. This has the Volt Pros in it. This is all the different colors of the Volt Pro, except the purple one, which if you haven't seen yet, very exciting uh, news. The purple Volt Pro now exists on Amazon. It is purple and black. Um, it's on the Amazon and Nabali's website, so definitely go check out the purple and black Volt Pro. We had so many requests for purple, and I thought purple and black was a great idea. So uh, yeah, we have that. Um, so obviously we have all the normal Volt Pros um, out of them. The black and red is probably my favorite. And then we have this, which is my custom black and orange Volt Pro. And then Brandon has his own Volt Pro, but uh, those two are a great start. And I don't, I don't know that this table is gonna be big enough. We're gonna try guys. The other thing that's cool in this case is, um, first of all, these two, which are early Volt Pro prototypes that never ended up making it to production. Um, I can show you on the orange one here, it's got stuff like this actual full cut through speed channel and some extra texturing. You can actually see that texturing mirrors where the, um, it mirrors the three lines that ended up being on the G10 and stuff like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then on top of that, um, you know, it was, but this was basically just very similar to the original Vulp. So it wasn't actually what I would consider to be like all that important of a uh, ballast song. It was just sort of an iteration between the original Vulp and the Vulp Pro. Uh, speaking of the original Vulp, here is my personal original Vulp that I flip all the time. This is my uh, purple one. I, I really like the purple color on the Vulp Pro, which I guess, you know, kind of, tells on me for us not having a purple color full of Volt Pro. Uh, obviously I should have done that because it's my favorite color of the original Volt, so that's sort of silly. But yeah, um, this is my original Volt. And then, oh Jesus, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna have enough room on this table just putting these four on there and the fact that they already take up that much of the corner. We're gonna try our best, guys. This is really cool. This is the original prototype for the Volt. And you can see, I, actually, it doesn't have that that bad of tap. It has tap, but it's it's very worse for wear. You can see all of the scratches and everything that this thing has been through. And that is because this was like the beater sample. This is the one that I put through its paces. I gave to people and told them, hey, take this and go and like, don't worry about dropping it on the ground because I wanna make sure that it's durable and still holds up and still flips well afterwards. And guess what? It does. So that was super nice. Um, but yeah, that's the original, original Volt Pro prototype that is slightly different from the, uh, or it, it's pretty actually majorly different from the final Volt. Uh, a few things you can see immediately is the handle length is different. It, the handles actually got a little bit longer on the uh, final version of the Volt. Um, as well as I changed some things about the cutouts and uh, the way that the handle rounding was working and stuff like that. But overall, that is that uh, there, let's put down this case to clear off the full table for the full experience that is coming and um, I guess just dive into it here. Okay, um, you know what, actually, if we're talking about funny Volt stuff, let's let's start off with something that's also kind of funny. Um, let's see, I have just a regular orange Volt here. Um, this is the other one that's like my daily carry flipper. So I guess those two can go together like that. Um, you can also see we changed the color of the orange from the original. The original had like a lighter orange, whereas we went with this more darker orange that kind of matches my car better. And I'm a big fan of the darker orange. So that's cool. Um, and this box is something very interesting. <laughs> this is the, the one clone 
of the Volp. And uh, this thing is really funny because first of all, I mean, they didn't even get it kind of right. Like that's really bad guys. Like that, they, they did not do a good job with that. It's pretty funny. Uh, on top of that, the rounding is just completely wrong. It's like super duper square. It hurts to touch and fan in multiple ways. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we got this thing shut down. So this is probably one of the first major success stories from a cloning company in China. We got the manufacturing of that shut down. And if you uh, look on AliExpress now, they're trying to sell off like the last bits of the stock and we take down the posts when we get the chance. Um, but they're trying to sell off the last bits of stock, but they're selling it for more than the price of the original Volp. So this thing, this bad clone that does not match up to the Volp at all is being sold for more than the price of the Volp. So that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I happen to own one of those because I literally bought it myself as evidence uh, for when we were getting the takedown requests going. Okay. Uh, left or right? Hmm. I'm going to go with right because there's some really interesting stuff in this little case. All right. So first off, obviously, we have the Tater Song. Uh, the Tater Song is a Flytanium ballast song. And also, this is going to be an exercise for me in trying to remember what in the fuck all of these things are. Um, all of these... I, I, I don't go through my collection in this way super often, and I will almost certainly forget what some of these ballast songs even are. So forgive me when that happens. But yeah, this is going to be an exercise for me. Anyways, the Tater Song is a ballast song by... Uh, Flytanium, and it was sort of an experimental ballast song, but it came in a really fun packaging uh, where it was like burger and fry themed and all fast food and cool stuff. And uh, it's actually a surprisingly good ballast song for how silly it looks. Like it actually flips decently well, which it shouldn't. It should flip badly, but somehow it's actually surprisingly good. Um, here we have the MachineWise Delta 5T. This is one of the first products that MachineWise ever made and the first MachineWise product that ended up in my collection. And to this day, I still absolutely love it. It's a weird, massive, chunky ballast song that doesn't make any sense, and it's fantastic for it. I genuinely love that ballast song. Um, right here is technically I'm cheating with this one because this is not a part of my collection. This is a part of my friend Mint's collection, but this is the GP Blades, um, jaw. Oh, what's it called? Jawbone. Thank God. Uh, it's the GP Blades Jawbone and, uh, this is Mint's ballast song, but this thing is incredible. So yeah, technically not a part of my collection, but I've been holding on to it for so long at this point. Uh, and also I really want to get my own jawbone. So maybe that's inspiration for the future. Um, oh, speaking of flytanium, here we go. Here's my fly tie, uh, Talisong, the Talisong Z. Uh, this is a awesome collaboration made with Eldon Talley between flytanium and him, and uh, it's a really cool ballast song because originally the Talisong song was only available as a custom piece. So the uh, Talisong song Z is a really cool thing where you don't have to buy a fully custom ballast song to get the experience of a Talisong. song. Here is my custom Benchmade 51. This thing is pretty fun. It has, well, one of my custom Benchmade 51s. I have multiple, but, um, this thing is pretty cool. It has uh, the gunner grip sail scales from EDCK. Uh, it has the pocket clip still installed, and it's got a flytanium uh, zenith live blade with bushings, and uh, it's actually pretty nice overall. Like it, it's got a lot going on. It, it flips great. I have um custom carbon fiber spacers that reduce the weight of the handles a fair bit. So it's it's handle biased, but not like really horribly so. Uh, I love that ballast song. It's also on the smaller side overall. All right, here is a very interesting ballast song, once again in the Volp category. This was created by Brandon uh, using information that he received from a few other people. They figured out that there was a tsunami clone type blade from something completely random on AliExpress that just so happened to fit the Volp 
handles and dimensions. And so you could technically make a weird live blade vault thing. So Brandon did that for me and he hand polished the entire thing. And it honestly flips really good. It's kind of funny how well it flips. Um, but yeah, Brandon gave this to me as a gift a while back and it is honestly such a cool little piece to have. What a, what a weird and interesting part of my collection. Um, keeping on that weird and interesting train, this is one of my personal favorite Bala songs ever. Uh, this is my JK Design Emissary number eight. So this is the eighth Bala song he ever sold. And uh, it's super cool. It's got all sorts of cool details that you can't really see on camera. Like his logo is inside of there along with the serial number. It's got these really awesome floating spacers. And uh, this is the first time that he made a trainer blade. Oops. And I commissioned this trainer blade from him specifically. So he designed this blade for me specifically, which is really cool. Um, then we have this right here. This is the Pelican. Uh, the Maxace Pelican, also known as the Pelicanus, um, which is my favorite thing. And then people told them that that was a bad name for it because it has anus in the name. And I got mad at the people that told them that because then they changed the name. And it was such a funny name, guys. Why would you have to ruin that for everybody? Um, the Maxace Pelican was one of my first... F it, actually, no, it was my first full channel titanium ballast song I had ever bought. Um, and I bought one of the original Pelicans back in the day. And then I eventually ended up selling it. And finally, I got this Pelican. And this one is super cool because it's a custom Pelican that has a Bally Ballistics hand ground blade. It's this beautiful clip point buoy. It's insane. It looks so good with that shimmer and the light. I don't know. I love the fuck out of this knife. It also flips surprisingly well, even though it's tiny like a Benchmade 51. And it's also sharp as all fuck. Um, but yeah, I, I love that little ballast song. All right. Uh, ooh, more weird stuff. Here we go. Weird category continues. We have The Wave by Artsy. Uh, this is a collaboration similar to what I did with Nabali's with the uh, Vulp. Uh, they did that with their own product called The Wave. And so this is a Artsy original ballast song that's pretty cool. Right here, I have a custom BRS uh, replicant that has some really weird stuff going on. It's got these uh, see-through... Uh, what do you call that? Acrylic uh, spacers? Not spacers. Um, good lord, I can't think of the name for anything all of a sudden. Um, scales. It's got uh, these long faux channel spacers, and then it's got this really cool inlaid um, patterned sort of uh, thing for the... Wow, I'm forgetting the name of all of the parts to a ballast song. Wow, that's, this, is, this is a great uh, way to start this video. <laughs> um, here, I need water. I'm getting nervous. I need, I need water to help me. We're good. Water's based. Okay. Um, the liners are this really cool titanium thing. Uh, and then it was anodized by Solar Flare. And um, yeah, this thing is honestly pretty awesome. It doesn't flip super well. It originally had a different uh, custom blade on it that made it way, way, way too blade heavy. This one is slightly less blade heavy, but it's still not great and requires a fair bit of work that I just haven't put into it yet. But we'll get there maybe. Um, then we have this beautiful beast. This is the Atropos Kirat. Uh, it's a D2 blade with this beautiful uh, blade profile. It's really simplistic. It's it's just a straight up channel titanium balisong, but the price that it was at at the time was insanely good. And just everything about it was really cool. Honestly, this is a, a really awesome little balisong, uh, especially for the price. We have the Kershaw Lucha uh, carbon fiber version. So this is the CF Lucha. It came with a uh, blade that was more of a clip point, like, I don't even know exactly what to call it other than just a straight up clip point. It, it was a weird sort of spear point kind of thing where it was symmetrical, but it was only sharp on one side. Um, this thing's fine. It flips better than the original Lucha, but it's also not great either. So, you know, it's a bit weird. Uh, then we have the Maxace, uh, ooh, what is this one called? Oh, God. Uh, this is the Maxace. It's not the Banshee. For some reason, Banshee is the thing that's in my head. 
Um, and I have two of these is the problem. Here's here's the live blade version. We might as well look at both. Um, oh, this one says it. It says obsidian. Wow, thanks, Max Ace. You guys are a lifesaver. Uh, yeah, I have two Max Ace obsidians. One of them is the older version. One of them is the newer version. And um, they're both really, really awesome ballast songs. And I obviously have the trainer and the live blade. They're a super weird, super wacky design, but they feel awesome to flip, weirdly enough, even with the latch installed. I actually keep the latch installed on these things because it feels awesome to flip even with that latch and it's a really nice spring latch so like why wouldn't you keep that installed all right so live blade and trainer of that and then last thing in this box is this my janky janky little um benchmade 51 clone so this is one of the first clones i ever bought way back in the day when i was getting into bala songs and while i don't suggest you buy clones i do absolutely understand the uh resource that clones are for people getting into the hobby like i would rather you buy a bala song clone than not buy a bala song at all that's my honest stance on the matter you know i i think that it would be better if that money could go towards the original maker but at the same time if you want to get into the Balasong hobby, clones happen to be a pretty good way to do that. Now, thankfully, nowadays there's a lot of options like the Vulp and Vulp Pro and the, uh, the stuff from Artsy and the stuff on Amazon. Like, there are a bunch of options now that are better ways to get into the hobby. But, you know, I at least know where clones were useful. And um, this one's a relatively not bad clone because they're not pretending to be the company at all. They're not faking it. Um, it is. It says the 142. So it, it's got its own logo and everything. It's not trying to be a fake. It's just copying the original. Um, okay, let's dig into this mess. Uh, okay, so this thing has some interesting ones. So let's start with these uh, original plastic ones. We've got the Zippy uh, Flipper. I, was there a name for this one or was it just the Zippy Balasong? I don't remember. Um, but this is from Zippy. This is one of his first Balasongs. And then this is the Cycloid from Zippy, which is a similar to this thing, but just way lighter. And truthfully, I didn't like how it flipped nearly as much as the original. Um, then we have another, uh, this is another original prototype of the Vulp, uh, but you, as you can see, it doesn't have the milling uh, to remove the uh, color from inside of there. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that. I decided to keep the milling because I like the dual tone look, but let me know if any of y'all like uh, it having that. Uh, my camera is slowly falling, which is causing it to become quite uncomfortable on my head. Uh, I wonder if I can pull it tighter. Okay, hopefully you guys don't fall while I do this. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. We've got enhanced tightness on my skull now. Now you guys won't fall as easily, but also maybe I'll get a headache faster. So we're going to we're going to weigh that option uh, as we go. <laughs> um here is a very cool ballad song from LDY. Uh I Ooh god, I'm going to I'm going to get canceled. Um, I don't remember the name of this battle song off the top of my head. I have another one, and hopefully by the time I get to it, I will remember what its name was. But yeah, that's from LDY. Um, this is the BB Barfly Pro V2. This is one of the first products that BB Barfly made that was like really fun and a really good flipper that everyone sort of agreed on as being like, this is a really fun, neat thing. Uh, good job, BB Barfly. Um, and I still love that. That stays at my bar all the time. Uh, we'll get to whatever that is, I think, last in this box. Uh, this is a really interesting one. This is the Olympus Industries. Uh, is it the Orion? Oh, I could be wrong about that. Um, but this is from Olympus Industries. This is a really interesting ballast song from a small company from a maker in Texas that popped up. And it's, it's pretty good. It's, um... Replicant adjacent, sort of replicant slash 51 adjacent. Uh, I wouldn't call it the best flipper I've ever tried, uh, but it's still a pretty good flipper for the money. Um, so that's a really interesting one. Um, next, we have the Polaris. This is from Balasong Flipping. And uh, I don't know what happened after this Balasong, but I've got to say, the person that actually designed this for Balasong Flipping uh, came up to me at Blade Show and gave me this one. And I'd never tried the Polaris before, but when I... And I, I was impressed with the Polaris when the design was uh, announced because, like, I really liked a number of the design features. One of the main ones being this really cool, like, 
sort of long cutout along the entire side, which basically gives you the experience and grip of a full uh, sandwich balisong, while the balisong maintains the fact that it is full channel. And uh, yeah, I was really impressed with this thing. Honestly, it's it's well executed and well designed. Um, I don't think that guy has designed any more stuff for balisong flipping. I think he's gone on to do his own stuff. And uh, his stuff is honestly even better. So, you know, but that, that's uh, a surprisingly good one. Also, another Volp, I have so many Volp uh, types. This is just another one that had um, two different experimental colors of green. So you can see this is when we were trying to suss out what kind of green we wanted. Um, that's an interesting one. This is a really, really, really cool balisong. This is the um, gyration from Gyration Knives. I think this is might be the Gyration V2. Um, this was given to me by one of our patrons. His name is Eric. Uh, thank you very much, Eric. You are awesome. Uh, and yeah, this is a really, really cool piece of Balasong history. This was a Balasong that was one of the first to implement a interchangeable weight system, which was done with these weights at the bottom, which I, I wonder, is it T10? Looks like it's T10. Yeah, it was done with these weights at the bottom where you could literally screw in and out different weights in there. And that was that was sort of the concept. It's like you can flip it with the weights, you can flip it without the weights. Uh, unfortunately, the Balasong just wasn't fully what people wanted, and so it didn't. It wasn't the most successful thing in the world. But it was a really really cool implementation of that weight system. <sighs> Got to have my coffee. Um, so yeah, that's the gyration. Thank you, Eric, for that. Um, more into the LDY train now. We have uh, this right here. I actually have two of them. This is V1 and this is V2. Uh, both of them are really... No, wait, no, these are both V2s. I have a V1 somewhere in here. Uh, this one's a V1. There we go. These are all from LDY. This is the LDY Orion. Uh, this is the Orion V1 with the uh, comb blade, which also, if you've ever been looking for a good ballast on comb, like I can do my beard right now, um, this thing is awesome. I highly suggest it. It's a surprisingly good comb, like the comb actually works, which for me, I wanted a good balisong comb for forever, and I never got it out of anything, and I was always super disappointed, so this is really nice to see. The comb actually works, and then on top of that, uh, it's a really great flipper. Um, same thing for the uh, V2, but even a slightly better experience flipping-wise. All right, we've run out of the first layer of the table, so now we have to go down a layer. Uh, so to start that process, here we have the uh, IndyK Arts Hive, uh, which is a similar thing to the IndyK Arts Oni. This is a really interesting balisong and actually became one of the most popular shorts on my channel because of this feature. It bends. It is made out of 3D printed resin, which allows it to be basically made out of that same uh, material that like flexible rulers are made out of. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's also massive. So I'm, I'm going to run out of space, dude. I'm so fucked. Uh, all right. Then we have this thing. Um, this is a nightmare. This is a nightmare. Uh, this is the most hilarious balisong I probably own. This was given to me as a joke by a friend. I don't know how you could use it because it's got a weird brass knuckles thing going on, but the live blade goes through the brass knuckles, which seems like a bad idea for when your fingers go in here and that's where the blade goes. Technically, you can open it like this and then it locks that way, and then I guess you're supposed to have, like, a hand guard with this, like, giant freaking knife, but I... I, I why? Like, why would this exist? Why do you? Why would anyone want this? Um, I'm gonna make a weird balisong area that'll go in the middle. I think. I think we're gonna do like weird balisongs in the middle, maybe. Um, if I have any more, we're gonna find out. All right. More cases. Um, let's see. Speaking of weird balisongs, I do have. I have this baggie of 3D printed balisongs, and then I have this entire box. 
of everything we've ever bought on Amazon. Um, I'm gonna do a quick run on the Amazon box and then I'm gonna throw them on the floor. Uh, this is the Flip Fins. Uh, it was a old light up Balasong toy that happened a long time ago. I can't believe it existed. It's, I really wanna know the story of it. I'm considering making like a weird mini documentary on that um, just cause I think it would probably be interesting. This is the Fidget Mech. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It is a modular, uh, Balasong system where you can create just the weirdest, funniest things. So you can see like this little thing right here is a Balasong, right? This is a Balasong, but everything is detachable. So like I can pull the handle right out of the blade and then just pop it back in there. Oh God. And you can just make this system of like weird interconnectable parts, which is super cool. Um, I have a whole baggie of accessories and I will often bring the, 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 um, fidget mech to parties and just let people play with it. Cause it's genuinely that fun. Uh, this is the spider knife from a, uh, upcoming re like new, uh, Balasong collection video that's happening. Uh, this is the Simba Balasong from one of our previous Amazon videos. Uh, and this thing is terrifying. So it's a real live blade Balasong Karambit. It has a locking button right here and a spring latch for whatever reason. And the way that it locks and unlocks is you have to take the spring latch and shove it into this hole and then it'll lock on the button. And then you press the button and flick it out. And then the idea is that it like flicks around and locks again on this side. <coughs> it's super weird. Um, it is a functioning karambit at least, so that's kind of neat, I guess. But uh, yeah, this thing is a very weird balasong that was available on Amazon. I don't know if it still is, but like, what a weird thing to be totally fine on Amazon, but we can't have our own balasong, like normal balasong live blades. I don't know. Um, of course, the classic 420 stainless steel G&W. Gotta love that thing. Um, oh, this is for an upcoming video. This is the uh, Own All Addicts. Um, there's a whole video upcoming about that. This is the Nabali's, uh, not the wing. Um, oh God, what is this one called? Oh, I, I messed this up during the shooting of that other video too. Um, this thing flips surprisingly good. No, Nabali's has been really, really, uh, caking it with all their good stuff. Honestly, I don't even want to put this into the Amazon box folder. Like I kind of want to put this on the table, but also I feel like I'm, I have this entire box to go through. So sorry, Nabali's. Um, Here's the old Nabali's G10 knives. These things are uh, like classic. We've got this uh, CSGO Balasong. We've got the classic, the early, early $30 Amazon Balasong that I taught everybody how to mod a long, long time ago in one of our first popular videos ever. Uh, this thing is so interesting to me and I still have it to this day. Um, we have the Nabali's, uh, oh, 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 Jesus Christ, the Hydra? Hydra, maybe? Um, I don't know. Correct me in the comments, please. Um, this thing is interesting. Uh, a lot of people like the way it flips. I'm not the biggest fan of how it flips. I, I it, it inspired the Volt Pro in a way because it was G10 and, and I really, I did like the idea of using the hardware at the end to kind of add some extra uh, swing to it. But overall, I wasn't a huge fan of how that thing flipped either. We've got our old Benchmade 51 clone. That was like cheap and shitty. Another different cheap Amazon Balasong that was like a $30 one. Um, another one, this is a, the one thing. Uh, that's a, like an original battle song from the one. Uh, there's the original Conby Bonal song. Gotta have the, gotta have my vape. Uh, gotta have my Bonal song. You know that that's a that's just a classic of the battle song hobby. Um, what is this thing? Uh, this is the Marcolo C116. Um, once again, we unbox that in an upcoming video. Uh, this, I'm actually editing that video today. After I record this video, I'll be editing that video. So um, this is the Bally Shark Marlin, I think. Once again, upcoming Amazon video. This is a weird channel version of the those uh, like CSGO battle songs. Um, what else do we have? Oh yes, the uh, the Civil War Balasong. Gotta love that, the Civil War Balasong. Um, 
I also have uh, the feed locker. You can see the feed locker. It's got an F there uh, for, for the feed locker, which is awesome. Gotta love the feed locker. Uh, I also have, I have two bottles of the feed locker. Uh, ironically, these two bottles of the exact same thing are from two different companies on Amazon, uh, Onal and um, Marcolo, which uh, I have suspicions that Marcolo and Onal are actually the exact same company. Who would have thought? Um, but I'll, that video, that gets covered even more in the upcoming video. So yeah, uh, we have, oh, that was sharper than I thought it would be. This is the weird steak knife thing. Oh, I forgot you, I hate you. Um, it's got a Benchmade logo on it. It says it's from Benchmade. That's that's the biggest lie I've ever heard. Um, all right. This weird curved blue thing. Um, this 3D printed one that I think was from Etsy. Um, the remnants of the Spider-Man knife and a bunch of parts and also one more of the weird thing from the one... This says T147 on it. I don't know what's up with that. Um, this thing was really bad. It, it, the, the handles are way too light, and it's like each one's like a pencil. It's very weird. Um, okay. Can you tell I'm like trying to speed run this? I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Oh, I made a mess all over the floor. Oh god, I'm gonna step on ballast lungs this entire time now. All right, into my Ziploc baggie. This thing is very weird. This is the Bally 3D uh, ballast song. I don't remember what its actual name was. I'm very sorry, Bally 3D, but uh, that's a very interesting ballast song. The thing is utterly massive, but weirdly kind of okay. Um, this is a tiny little cheese ballast song that is also from Etsy that weirdly does flip all right, even though it weighs literally nothing. It's like a feather. This is the go-to um, ballast song. This is the one that got, what, several million views, like 30 million views or something from uh, Balasong Flipping on his channel where it's like, I think, is the video just called Um? It's, or like, it's it's something like that. The video's just, it's got like several million views and it's called like Um with like a thinking emoji. And it's of this Balasong of him like flipping it and then dropping it. And that's the whole video. And that got millions of views. And every day I sit awake and cry about that, uh, thinking about how if I just dropped a Balasong, maybe I would get a million views, but it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not salty. Um, and then we have this wonderful relic of the uh, Etsy experience as well, which is just the classic <laughs> uh, little 3D printed ballast song. I love these little 3D printed things. They're all so, so fun and weird. All right, time for the big case. I hope you're all ready. Um, so first up, Squiddy WH, that's pretty cool. Got, got, a, got my own version of the Squiddy now. I'm very, very thankful to Squid Industries for making that happen. Here's the uh, original prototype to it that came before that one. And then even before that, I have this older prototype of it, which was all black and had a completely different handle pattern. So this thing was interesting. Uh, and then before that, I made my own custom Squiddy, which was literally assembled by me at Squid Industries facilities and has my own little logo on it. So that's... That's pretty neat. I'm proud of that thing. Uh, man, I'm really gonna have to like make these things fit. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, okay, this is the box that it comes in. Very cool, very nice. Thank you, Squid Industries. Uh, going on the Squid Train, here's another custom one. This is my Wilhirsch.gay Squid Industries Tsunami. Gotta love this thing. Uh, this is the Penny Tsunami, named after my cat Penny, uh, who passed away. She was a star in a number of our videos at the time, and um, I had this balisong on me when she passed away, which is why it became known as the Penny Balisong, partially because the balisong was the one I was carrying at the time, but also because it's a weird little balisong, and she was a weird little cat, and so that's really fun. It's a, um, for those of you that don't know the story of this thing, I guess I, I should talk about it, um... Sorry, I need some more coffee. Uh, this is the Squid Industries Tsunami. So uh, this is basically the best product that Squid Industries makes. 
and this is the penny tsunami. The tsunami is the best thing that Squid Industries makes, and this is the worst thing that Squid Industries has probably ever made, because it is literally made of scrap parts that were never meant to be put together. All of these parts are failures from the creation of the tsunami, and yet all, all of them are different. You can see they're all different. They don't even really fit together, and yet they create one of my favorite ballast songs to flip in the whole world. Uh, this thing is honestly wonderful, and I just, I, I love that it exists. And then here's the uh, actual, just regular Tsunami that's also extremely wonderful and one of my favorite battle songs. This is number 169 from Production 5. I got it at Blade Show. I'm very happy about it. Um, I managed to, like, pick that randomly, and it happened to be one, number 169, and I was like, well, that's fate. I gotta buy it. Um... Let's keep looking. Here we go. This is the Jerry Hom Eye Bass. This thing is really cool. A full channel version of the Jerry Hom Basilisk. Really love that thing. Then we have the uh, Basilisk. This is the Basilisk Elite. Um, and this thing is just super sick. Uh, it's beautiful gold. It's got uh, carbon fiber spacers. It honestly feels fantastic to flip. Like it's it's genuinely a very good flipper. But it the tip is terrifying. That tip will go so deep into your soul um, that you will be very sad about it. And also it'll shatter inside of your skin, which is great. Um, and also the whole thing is just too pretty that I often don't really flip it, and I feel kind of bad about that. Uh, then we have. This, this is the Fellowship Blades uh, Impusa, and this thing is freaking awesome. The, uh, it, it, it's genuinely one of my favorite ballast songs at this point. I flip it literally all of the time. I love this thing. Uh, very, very nice ballast song. Thank you uh, to Grant at Fellowship Blades. Um, I recently found out that there are clones of this. Speaking of, like we were talking about the clone thing earlier, there are apparently clones of this thing, and that makes me extremely sad because Grant is such a small maker already that like having clones of his products has n like that sucks for his business because he's already he already has a tough enough time paying the bills as it is seeing uh cloning companies go after even the smallest of makers is really sad um this is the max a serpent striker v3 absolutely love this ballast song this is a awesome g10 ballast song it's got this uh titanium liners and uh really sick like surprisingly good blade steel it's a really really great ballast song especially for the price that it came out at um, here we have my beautiful Talisong. This is one of my favorite ballast songs of all time, bar none. You can see it's got this insanely beautiful Damascus to the blade. It just looks gorgeous. The handle texture is insane, and uh, it, it, it's genuinely one of my favorite things I've ever had. I, I love my Talisong. Uh, it flips kind of weird. It's very handle biased, but that's okay. Um... Going to the other side a bit, we have the Squiddy AL. This thing is just awesome. I love the Squiddy AL. It's It's been a surprisingly fun addition to the Squiddy lineup, even though it's metal and it's a bit hard to, like, take on planes and stuff. Um, we have this. This is the Fellowship Blades Gaboon, I believe. No, wait, this isn't the Gaboon. Jesus, what am I, what am I saying? Um... This is the Hognose. God, I... Sorry. Sorry about that. I know the Gaboon is not... Sorry. Uh, yeah, this is the Hognose from Fellowship Blades, and this is a, it's a bit of a weird one. It does flip kind of good, but also is too light. I don't know, it's, it's a strange one for sure. Uh, ooh, Benchmade 51 again, hello. Look at that. Uh, this is my custom Benchmade 51, my other one. This one has some insane stuff going on, so it has, uh, Flytanium Carbon Fiber Inlay Scales, which just looks so freaking sick. It has a uh, original Balasong 51 Benchmade blade, but it has uh, bushings that have been added by Ben Parley, so that's awesome. Thank you, Ben. Uh, and then it's also got these awesome Jimpy Designs Space Invaders, uh, which are just super cool and add a very inter They make the sound extremely interesting. Unfortunately, it's not the best flipper in the world because it's way too handle biased, but at the same time, that weirdness kind of makes it fun, so... I don't know. This is my JW Magnet. This is easily one of the prettiest ballast songs I own. It is a gorgeous handmade knife from Poland. We have a whole review about it, and uh, I genuinely love that thing. 
Here is my BRS Channel Alpha Beast. Um, this thing is awesome. Uh, love the Channel Alpha Beast. I got the latchless version because even though it flipped technically kind of worse than the uh, latched version of the BRS Alpha Beast, I kind of liked that it did because it was at least different. Um, Ooh, we have the Pro Flipper from Emmanuel LeBron. So this is the ELB Pro Flipper. This thing is genuinely awesome. Uh, this was a grail knife of mine for the longest time, and I'm very, very glad to own it. It's beautiful. I believe this is a Pro Flipper V1 too, which makes it very, very cool and very rare. This is a, a very wonderful ballast song that I'm proud to own. Um, Squid Industry Swordfish. This is a very limited edition Squid Industry Swordfish. This is the, as far as I'm aware, only orange one they've ever made, which is crazy. They actually made an orange one just for me. I really hope that they release more orange in the future. And if they have, and I just wasn't aware of it, let me know. But uh, yeah, this thing is awesome. It says willhirsch.gay on there on the other side as to where the Squid Industries logo is. Uh, it, it's a really, really sweet thing that they created this for me. And uh, yeah, I love, love the swordfish. Um, don't flip it as often as I probably should, but honestly, it's funny. The, the handle uh, shape reminds me a lot of my Pro Flipper because both of them are just very rectangular ballast songs. All right, what else we got? Um, oh, BB Barfly. This is the BB Barfly Barracuda. This thing is really cool. It's a beautiful orange one that was sent to me by uh, BB Barfly. Thank you guys so much. And uh, honestly, the Barracuda is a really, really sick ballast song. It's a very, very well-made ballast song. It's still just as unique as all of BB Barfly's stuff. It still captures their essence, which is this very unique and different company. But it does it in a way that like doesn't stray from the brand, which I really like. Um, this is the Bite Blades Titan. This is genuinely one of my favorite trainers of all time. And I'm very disappointed that Bite Blades sort of vanished off the face of the earth because this thing was a genuinely really cool trainer that I, I think uh, deserved more time in the spotlight. We have the LDY um, Cygnus. And the Cygnus is obviously a incredible ballast song. It helped inspire me to create the Volt Pro. And uh, I, I genuinely love the Cygnus. It's a, it's a fantastic flipping ballast song. Um, here is my Machine Wise Serif. Uh, to this day, still uh, at the top of my collection. It, in my pocket each day, you will find either this ballast song, my Tsunami, or uh, my Hybel Invictus, or my Stitch Steel Alien. And those are like my primary four ballast songs that I am constantly changing between. And I just, the, the, the Serif is just beautiful too. I just, I love that texture. It's just insane. All right, let's move on to, um, yeah, let's talk about the Wraith. Here's the EPS Wraith. The EPS Wraith is an awesome ballast song. EPS has been doing incredible stuff, and I love to see uh, non-channel ballast songs coming back, especially beautiful G10 sandwich style. Th this thing is utterly fantastic. Um, I've been flipping my Cracker Rackin' a lot more lately. Love to be getting back into that again. Um, this is my beautiful black and orange Cracker Rackin' that I bought from a very cool person on Instagram. And uh, this thing has served me extremely well. I'm very happy to own that guy. We have here, this is a uh, Palatheus Buoy Ronin. This is a really, really awesome, uh, very grail knife for a lot of people uh, from Palatheus Designs. This thing is a very interesting ballast song. It reminds me a lot of my Stitch Steel Alien if the Alien wasn't built as nicely. <laughs> um, and so, in the meantime, here's the Stitch Steel Alien. This is genuinely probably one of the greatest ballast songs in my entire collection. I Love this thing to death. Stitch is a dear friend of mine that lives locally to me here in Atlanta. Um, he's not that far away. He recently moved a little bit further away, which makes me sad, but he's still here in Georgia with me. And uh, this thing is just freaking gorgeous. I, I love everything about this. It, it's one of the best ballast songs I own, period, bar none. Um, Thank you, Stitch, for your incredible work on that thing. Uh, the Hybel Invictus is also up there in terms of ballast songs that I consider to be the absolute best that I own. This is a beautiful ballast song that has insane engravings. It's got this insane tiger engraving to the blade. Look at that. And then the handles have this lightning pattern. And together, it, it's just 
striking. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous ballad song that I am utterly in love with, and uh, I, I really genuinely love my Hybel Invictus. Um, a new recent addition to the collection, the Rye Works Home M.A. really love this thing. Uh, I have been missing it for quite some time now since uh, losing it after I sold it, and um, I finally have one back, and this time it's the Live Blade buoy design, and it, it, it's just it's just great. I love it. Um, omeme means eyes in Japanese. Um, specifically, omeme uh, means like my eyes, or or the honorific o in in Japan. Uh, basically is is a respectful signifier. So omeme basically is a respectful way of saying eyes, which indicates that you're talking about somebody's eyes, be it your own or somebody else's. Japanese nerd shit. I don't know. Either way, very, very cool, beautiful ballad song from Japan. Um, would love to get more Ryworks stuff in my collection. However, I do have one Ryworks thing in my collection that was hiding this whole time under the second layer. What's this sparkly thing right here? What could that be? Well, that's the butt plug, uh, girls and gentlemen. That's the Ryworks butt plug. Can you see that it says Ryworks on there? That is, that's the Ryworks logo on a butt plug. That's right, Ryworks made a butt plug. It says metal up your ass on it. That's probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. When he posted this years ago, I was like, I need one of those. I've never used this thing. I probably would never use this thing. Most partially because I don't really have any butt plugs, but also because it looks like it would hurt. It looks painful. This looks dangerous. But you know what it would be good for? Self-defense. Ba ba. Um yeah, that's the Ryworks butt plug, and that's probably the funniest thing that I own, and I'm glad that I have the matching set now with the butt plug and the Omeme. Uh, very cool, very important. Um, okay, down here in the bottom of this case, let's let's run through it. Uh, I have my Tay Flipper, my custom Tay Flipper that says Will Hirsch on it. Very, very cool. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tay, for that. That thing is beautiful. I really love flipping it. Um, this is my first ballast song I ever bought from a tiny store in uh, Denton, Texas called the Downtown Mini Mall 2. And uh, this thing is awesome. Uh, it is utterly and totally shit. It is one of the worst ballast songs you'll ever flip, and I love everything about it. Um, this is my Crackerackin, which has uh, handles that have added speed channels to it. Personally, I don't actually flip it that much because the speed channeled handles, turns out, don't really fit uh, the blade that I had for it. And so the handles can touch. They can squeeze and slap together. And so if I actually start flipping it, they start slapping, and that's not that fun. This is the Max Ace. Uh, what are you? What are you? You're the Scorpius. That's right. This is the Max Ace Scorpius. This is one of the first ballad songs that I even owned back in the day, uh, and I genuinely loved it. Um, it's this super cute little tiny ballad song, uh, and the trainer version I think is really cute because it's literally just an outline of the blade. But I, I genuinely liked it a lot. Um, all right, we have. Ooh, yeah. Max Ace Train. Here we go. This is my Max Ace uh, Covenant V2. Uh, and this thing is totally sick. I love the Covenant. Um, it was one of my first favorite ballad songs. It was one of my first grails uh, back in the day when NRB was actually uh, posting videos on YouTube and stuff like that. I used to watch his stuff all the time, and I loved how much he liked his uh, Covenant. And so I always wanted one, and I'm glad I got one. This is the uh, BB Barfly Talon. This thing's very cool. Uh, it's just a really nice little flipper. You can see that the uh, Barracuda sort of like came out of the Talon and became the better flipping version of it, but both of them were really cool. <coughs> uh, we're, we're, totally, we're totally running out of room on this table, but that's okay. Um, this is the, uh, once again, the LDY Cygnus, but this is just the really bougie, pretty version of it that they sent me to kind of, I think, to kind of butter me up. You know what? It worked. I, th this buttered my biscuit, I'll tell you that much. But yeah, this thing is beautiful. It has a mother of pearl inlay, uh, this really awesome uh, carbon fiber uh, liners, and yeah, it's just really cool. Okay. What do we got here? Oh, oh come on, baby. This is my Kershaw Lucha with the Flytanium orange handles. This thing is really cool. Uh, the Flytanium mod for the Kershaw Lucha was really nice. It made the Kershaw Lucha flip million times better. And uh, yeah, Flytanium did an awesome job with that. All right. 
Inside of this case is another case. Oh, wait, wait, there are secrets here too. Ooh, weird little secrets, look at this. Okay, so I have two of these, which are the uh, original Bally Yo's. Uh, the Bally Yo is a really funny little thing that you can get on Amazon for like a few bucks. It's from Spider Co. And it's literally a Fisher Space Pin in a Bally Song. It does not flip well. It honestly flips awful, but it's a really fun little toy for the office or to bring to school or whatever. Like it's not, it's not a good experience, but it is fun and silly. So like I, I can't, I can't disagree with it. Uh, this is the weirdest thing I've ever gotten from uh, MaxAce. This is the MaxAce Laurent. Whoops. Um, it is a strange little guy. Uh, the Live Blade version of this is double-edged, which is insane to me. Um, it basically cannot be flipped because it is so tiny. The fact that I can flip this at all is a miracle. I guarantee you if you brought this to anybody at Blade Show, they would have a harder time than I am flipping it. And it's only because I've genuinely put a lot of hours on this thing it, between all of the various videos we've made and all the b-roll we shot of it it's it's very funny um but yeah this thing is such a weird thing it's on like really tiny bearings every single every single thing on it is non-standard sizing from all of the hardware to like every little piece of it is just completely non-standard and i, I kind of love it in that way like I, it's one of the weirdest things and probably one of the worst max ace battle songs i've ever gotten but at the same time, I love that it exists. Like, thank you, MaxAce, for being willing to experiment. It's a similar thing that I kind of say about um, Nabali's now. Like, Nabali's has been releasing a bunch of really interesting Bala songs, and I'm very thankful for it, because it's like, thank you for trying something different. Like, even if it isn't that good, at least you're trying, and I love that. <clears throat> All right, the last few Bala songs are in here, and I don't know how I'm going to make them fit on the table, but we're going to do it. All right, um... We have the Max Ace uh, Apostle. This thing is really, really cool. This is an M390 full channel balisong. It kind of, it honestly reminds me a lot of the Benchmade 42 to flip. And uh, I I love the shit out of this balisong. It's super cool. It's got this really dope uh, spring latch. And I love a good spring latch that's like well implemented. So it's got a well implemented spring latch that I'm very happy about. Um, so that's cool. Maybe I can just start shoving things in and we'll just like make it work. Oh, fuck. Oh, this is not, this is not gonna go well, is it? I'm gonna start stacking up ballast songs that like are the same. Maybe, maybe that's what we do. I mean, but then that's, then that's cheating for the thumbnail because the thumbnail needs to be all of them like squished together, right? Uh, good lord, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. This is, this is, I have too many. I can't believe that I have so many that won't even fit on the table. Um, here's the, uh, the one from, uh, LDY that I forgot the name of it earlier. Uh, I believe this is the LDY... Sirius... V2. I think. And so that means this is the LDY Sirius V1. I'm a genius. Um, yeah, so the LDY Sirius V2, uh, it was a really, really good ballast song to come out at the time. It was honestly a very decent crack a competitor, so uh, great job without that LDY, and that's one of the things that really helped LDY establish themselves in the ballast song hobby. You know what I'm realizing I should have done? Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Well, we're gonna do this right now, um, and I'm, I'm sorry that you guys have to do this, but I could, if I put them... If I put them back and forth like this, we can fit more in the same amount of space. I am such an imbecile. <laughs> it's okay. We're 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 gaming, everybody. We are so gaming right now. Look at this. Look at how much space we're saving. We are so efficient right now. Oh, nobody nobody saw this this level of efficiency coming. Not for me. No, I, 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 I've sold myself so short, you guys have no idea. Every time you look at me, I tell you. You know what I tell you? I tell you, I am a, a, a short man with a small IQ. I've got nothing going on. I, I've, got, I've got a small brain. And you all believe me? You believe me when I tell you that? And it allows me to, to act as dumb as I want and, 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 and never get caught for it. And I'm a genius, actually, and that's, that's my genius showing is that I actually have been hiding from you all that I am a genius this entire time. I've been, I, I, I've, I've 
uh, played you up, as it were. I've, I've, I've had you. Um, I've got you by the se by the seat of your knickers, and um, I actually this entire time I've been a genius who knew exactly how the world works and how to make a bunch of ballad songs fit on a table uh, the right way the first time. And instead of uh, spending the uh, entire, like, multiple minute long section of the video basically attempting to do a weird sort of, like, improv exercise uh, to make sure that the audience doesn't get bored while he uh, goes through and reorganizes the entirety of everything that he set up, um, I wouldn't do anything like that. Instead, I would just be a genius from the beginning and do it the right way, and then we would have enough space on the table for everything, because I'm very smart. Um, I hope that made sense to y'all. Anyways, here's the uh, Glider Co. Antarctic. Um, or Wait, is this... No, this is just the regular Arctic. Am I stupid? Yeah, I'm stupid. This is the this is the Glider Co. Arctic. This is the Glider Co. Antarctic. The Arctic is an awesome little guy. Um... I really love it. Glider Co. did some incredible stuff with their ballad songs, but the Antarctic flips insanely well. Even to this day, I really, really like how the Antarctic flips. Glider Co. has been absolutely busting it down when it comes to not only making incredibly good ballad songs, but also they've been making just the best ballad song accessories, bar none. They have ballad song display stands. They have a bushing tuner. They have a... Uh, crank thing that's the 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 bally driver that allows you to screw and unscrew your things then also crank them down and stuff like it it glider co's made the best accessories if you don't buy a glider co ballast song bare minimum go to their website look at the accessories section it is crazy how useful their stuff is okay um last few things we have the uh max ace um Laron. wait no this is the Laron. oh shit what are you Mmm, Max Ace, you didn't write the name of it on it this time. Why didn't you do that for me? <sighs> and I know this one, too, and I think it starts with an L. I'm pretty sure it starts with an L. Oh, Max Ace, what did you name this product? Either way, this is a Max Ace product. It's got uh, pretty much just standard, solid uh, titanium handles. It honestly reminds me a lot of the original Scorpius, um, just kind of bigger and cooler, and both of them flip fantastically. It, it, it's surprising how much grip this bead-blasted titanium has for how, like, weird it is. Um, this is my Squid Industries... Squid Trainer V 2.5. This is one of the first major purchases I ever made at a Blade show. I bought it impulsively after being so impressed at how good it could be only on washers. This thing ran, runs only on washers and it feels honestly fantastic and has to this day almost no play whatsoever. Like look at that. It has barely any play and this runs on washers. I don't know. It's really impressive to me. Squid did an amazing job with that. Um, that's very much a legacy ballad song for them. Oh, here's the Bally Driver. Look at that. Boop -a -boop. <laughs> I had it. I had it the whole time. This is the awesome little Bally Driver from uh, Glider Co. And it has a spot on the rear end for just like a regular driving and then a spot on the other side for torquing. And that's, that's the nicest freaking thing ever. I'm going to just stick that in there between those. This is my janky, janky, janky... Uh, Monarch from JK Designs. This this thing has so much play at this point. It's this thing has been through hell. It has an insane amount of play. It the handles just completely slap together due to the pinsless implementation not being very good. They slap together forwards and backwards. They slap together everywhere they possibly can. It still has bearings in it, but they don't really work anymore. This entire thing has just fallen apart and becoming a a shamble sad version of itself that I paid like literally a thousand dollars for so you know um there was a slight quality difference long term when it came to you know between my uh original purchase of the JK Designs emissary and this janky janky sad monarch um the Monarch, uh, this Monarch in particular, just speaking of, I was talking earlier about how this is Mint's Balasong, not mine. I, I actually gave this to Mint. So once again, this is Mint's Balasong, not mine. This janky, janky uh, trash heap that cost me $1,000, this is Mint's now, not mine. 
So not my problem anymore. <laughs> I was considering selling it for really cheap, but then I was like, I don't want to like make Julian mad because I sold one of his like expensive products for really cheap. And then I was like, no, I'm just going to give it away to one of my friends. And then I don't have to worry about it at all. All right. Well, great job, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this look at my entire collection. I have so many more Bala songs than I did previously. Like, th this is, this is bad, right? Like, this is, this is insane, right? Like, I, I have, I have too many. I have way too many Bala songs. Um, but also, it's kind of my job. Like, unfortunately for all of these Bala songs, I want to thin my collection. I want to sell some of them. But at the same time, like, I actually have to have a collection of this size because whenever I make Bala song videos where we're reviewing a Bala song or whatever, like, people expect me to, you know, be able to compare whatever product we currently have with a bunch of other things. And so I genuinely do need a collection of this size to do my job on YouTube. Nobody needs a collection of this size if it is not like literally their job. However, if you have a collection of this size, congratulations. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I ever could have imagined myself getting to this point. Having even a fra- like I, having this many of this entire thing would have already been a mind-blowing thing to my feeble little brain back in the day. And yet here we are literally an hour into the video and I have finally covered all of my battle songs. I knew it would take an entire hour. It literally just became an hour. And I, th this is insane. Um, and th this isn't even including all the ones on the floor now. So... Yeah, uh, I, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. Um, before I thank you all for watching, I think let's count up what of these on the table are like my real Bala songs that I actually flip, which most of the ones that are laid out here are ones that like I have and actually flip. And then I won't really count any of the um, Amazon ones or the uh, the 3D printed ones. So let's, let's count. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. Oh, that's a type of uh, aluminum. 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. I will count this one because I do actually flip this one. <sighs> I have one shy of 80 Bala songs on this table. And this doesn't even include, like I own all of the colors of the Vulp, so I guess that technically counts as more Bala songs, but I don't flip those because we keep those around for B-roll just in case. Um, like, they, I have other Bala songs too. I have Bala songs that you guys don't even know about yet, which is very exciting, but I can't tell you, I can't tell you about that yet. But either way, um, yeah, I literally own if, especially if you actually do count all the shit on the floor, which there's at least more than 10 Bala songs on the floor, I own almost 100 Bala songs at this point, don't I? That's... That's weird. That's weird. These videos are gonna get so long. I don't know if I can keep making these, guys. Do you want me to keep making these? Is this, is this good? Is this informative to you? Or is this, like, like, trash content that isn't actually very good? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Thank you all so much for watching. Here's a uh, better look at the entire spread. Um, you know, feel free to screenshot that, I guess. I, I think I'm probably going to use the further back image as the thumbnail, because, like, it... But maybe I'll use this one. I don't know. It's it's too many Bala songs, regardless. It's so much... It's impossible to keep track of, too. Like, I'm thankful for the cases that I have, but honestly, I'm going to need to design a new version of this case that can fit, like, a hundred Bala songs in it and gets rid of all this, like, extra storage space. I think I might just have to make a new one that literally is just as many Bala songs as I can fit inside of it, which is hilarious. So, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially Eric. Thank you so much for this thing. That's super cool. And uh, 
Yeah, my throat hurts uh, because I have been talking for such a long time and I've only taken a few sips of water. That was a bad idea, but it's okay. Hope, I, by the way, I, I changed the focus settings, so now it's not on the product mode anymore. Hopefully that was a little less sickening. People were telling me that like the product focusing thing was too much. I changed that, so hopefully that was better in this video. But either way, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace. <laughs>